Today, we will talk about money habits that keep you poor. So before we get started, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to my channel. 1. FOMO on crypto. Here's hoping that in 2023, the fear of missing out on cryptocurrency is squashed. And there were plenty of examples in 2023 of how risky your crypto purchase can be. Several large crypto companies collapsed last year. Sam Bankman-Fried, the former CEO of FTX, one of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchanges, was charged with criminal fraud. Federal bank regulatory agencies issued a joint statement this week highlighting crypto risks for banking organizations. There is no federal insurance covering crypto exchange failures. Events of the past year have been marked by significant volatility and the exposure of vulnerabilities in the crypto asset sector, the regulators said. Crypto is very speculative, which can be financially disastrous for unsophisticated investors. 2. Impulse buying Those who are constantly in financial distress are often the type to snatch up something whether it's on sale or not, even if the purchase wasn't exactly planned. In fact, impulse buying can lead to a series of different issues. First, many people will justify these unplanned purchases by saying that they earned this new gadget or that the item is not a want but a need. Second, these spur-of-the-moment purchases, when put on a credit card, may lead to the person paying for the item without actually having the funds to cover the cost. Finally, these random purchases make it much more challenging to adhere to your spending budget. 3. Spending more than you earn It's the easiest thing in the world to spend more money than you earn, and it's the number one obstacle to building wealth. If you spend everything you bring in or more, you can't save and invest. That means you don't make progress. You never get ahead because you are holding yourself back. Even when you get a raise, you may be tempted to say, now I can finally get that new car house boat computer, instead of putting the increase to good use by letting it grow. How can you ensure that you don't spend more than you earn? First, always automate saving and investing. Save at least 10% of what you earn and consider adding each salary increase to the savings amount. Instead of spending more, save more. 3. Carrying a credit card balance Credit is a vital part of financial planning and access to credit is essential. However, using credit can be very expensive. For example, suppose you have a travel reward card and use it to make purchases, perhaps even pay bills with it. You feel good about it because you earn points for airline tickets or even cash back. That's a great idea, as long as you don't cancel the benefit by paying interest on those purchases. The credit card issuer is counting on you not paying off the entire balance each month. That's how they make money. They also get a small percentage from the merchant in many cases. Interest charges kick in if you pay less than the total amount you spent one month. Your rate depends partly on your credit situation, but it's rarely minimal. You can take years to pay off a small balance if you only make the minimum payment each month, even if you never use the card again. 4. Not using a budget A budget isn't always a restriction. Instead, it is a planning tool that lets you completely understand your financial condition. Budgeting doesn't mean not buying bistro coffee, although that habit is almost always a good one to cut. Instead, it means accounting for what you earn and spend to ensure you progress towards your financial goals. Creating a budget can be very simple. You already know most of the big things you spend money on, including your car loan, mortgage, insurance, groceries, utilities, and other essentials. However, you may sense that you spend more on optional items like entertainment. Eating out is a category that tends to absorb far more spending than most people realize. Streaming and other services and other untracked expenditures. 5. Not investing How can I save and invest when I have all these daily expenses? It's a great question, and the answer is remarkably simple. Reduce costs below income so you can save and invest. The money you spend on most things does not contribute to your financial growth. The main exception is your mortgage, which helps you accumulate equity in your home. Using your income to invest in real estate or other options, like stocks, can help you by multiplying the money you have. Even real estate can lose value, like other investments. One of the highest value returns on investment you could possibly do is find amazing resources for free education. Without a doubt, 
One of the best resources for free investing education is the resource section. There are tons of posts, blogs, and videos on a variety of topics ranging from real estate to entrepreneurship to investing go to the resources section on the sinkinvestment.com site. 6. Not maxing out your 401k account This habit is one of the most short-sighted. When you work for an organization that offers you access to a 401 or a similar version for nonprofits designated as a 403, you should always maximize your contributions. First, the money you save in a 401 account is not taxed. Let's say your tax bracket for income is 30%. If you earn $1,000, you get to use $700. But if you divert that $1,000 to your 401, account, you can use the entire $1,000. Keep in mind that any earnings in the account are also tax deferred. So if that $1,000 grows to $2,000, you'll pay taxes on the growth until you withdraw money from the account. But there's more. Most employers that offer a 401 contribute something as well, usually a match of part of what you contribute. If your employer matches 50% of your contribution, that's $500. So right away, your $1,000, only worth $700 to you if you spend it, becomes $1,500. It's impossible to reliably duplicate that kind of growth anywhere else. Leave the money in your 401 to grow, and it will build for your retirement. 7. Not having financial goals Not having financial goals is a habit that can keep you stuck in a cycle of financial instability. Without clear goals, it's easy to fall into bad financial habits and fail to make progress towards a more secure financial future. To break this habit, it's essential to set financial goals that align with your values and priorities. This could include paying off debt, building an emergency fund, saving for a down payment on a home, or planning for retirement. Once you've set your financial goals, it's important to create a plan to achieve them. This could include setting a budget, tracking your expenses, and finding ways to increase your income. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.